Hey guys, this is Michael, and welcome back to Let's Make Maps, Episode 7. Uh, this is a continuation of Episode 5, which was a beginning of a tutorial on how to make realistic-ish uh, town and castle walls. So, um, if you haven't seen that episode, you're going to want to watch it because it contains some foundational material. And um, we're going to jump right in here and have a look at... Um, at what we got to last time. So we did a little bit of work here on uh, getting some walls drawn, two different sizes of them, and then starting on the big one doing some shadow, initial shadow work, and these highlights here are just to show the individual pieces because they don't really show up that well until you get shadows done. So there's a lot to do here and uh, we will just get started on it and I think I gotta hook up my tablet maybe so give me a sec. All right, that's uh, that's got it. I uh, I looked over and realized that the lights were off on it. So I'm using a uh, Wacom Intuos 5 Touch. It's uh, not the latest thing on the market. In fact, I'm not sure what is the latest thing on the market, but it's pretty good. And frankly, any Wacom you can get your hands on is pretty good. Uh, you're gonna want a tablet pretty much uh, for this kind of work. You, but you can get by with a with a mouse. I've seen people make incredible maps with just a mouse. Don't ask me how. I can't do it. So um, anyway, uh, let's see. So what we've got over here, and um, I'm recording this at uh, 1080p, so hopefully you guys can see my layer stack over here. But we've got two two layers. Uh, we've got small or two folders here, the small wall and the large wall. And then we've got a background layer here, which has just a couple things in it. And we have a, uh, a little light indicator here, just so we can remember where the light's coming from. So we are working on the large wall, and it has a number of components, including, let me just turn them all off, and we'll just go through it really quickly. We got a base layer of the wall, which is just a shape. All we needed was a shape there. And so there it is with some, uh, with some textures on it. Um, we have a tower base, which is the base of our towers, and there it is with some textures on it. Uh, we got some shadows here that are uh, hanging out waiting for us to do something with them and uh, we got a brick texture for the upper ring on these uh, towers and then we have a uh, and then we have a final top layer which is like the crenellations on top of the of the battlements so what we're doing is trying to make uh, some realistic shadows that uh, that play on the lower levels of this wall and that's what we're going to continue doing this episode. So uh, let's see. We have to make all of these shadows on all the different layers and then figure out how they interact with each other and kind of get them to merge together in a reasonable way uh, so that they only fall on the things that we want them to fall on, but more importantly, so that they don't like overlap and create some kind of issue. Um, and I think I've already got that causing some kind of an issue. Uh, yeah, I think that's what we want there. All right, so we have a lot of temporary type layers going on here. Uh, this top guy is, uh, it's masked out because we have, uh, if we look at, let's see, if we look at this layer here, you can see the mask that I made, right? Which is changing. If we disable this layer mask, you can see that they're just the, the main blocks, but it's um, it's just showing us what we're what we've got masked out here. So I'm going to turn off this stroke now. Actually, maybe I'll leave the stroke on because it's kind of difficult to see. I'm going to zoom in, and uh, let's just start seeing what we can do about making this look a little bit better. So we have our shadow from the crenellations, right? But if you look at it, it's not really connected, right? So our light is coming from here. So in theory, we ought to be able to trace a line from where this thing is impacting the, the surface below and, uh, and connect it up. So let's go ahead and do that, and we're just going to do it by sketching. Um, so I'm going to grab my pen here, and I'm going to grab a brush tool and just a small soft brush. And make sure my uh, Wacom tablet is set to size on the little rolly bit here. I'm going to get black 
and I'm just going to try to draw into this layer here a little bit. My opacity turned down. No, it seems fine. And all I want to do is connect these up so that there's no gap. Yeah, that might be a bit much, but uh, why don't we have it going that way? Hmm, I'm not real sure. This should actually be, you know, because again, our light is coming from this way, right? So always be thinking of that when you're deciding what you need to fill in here. And we do need to care about this stuff on the ground. It may not show at the end of the day, but for now we do kind of want to care about it. And we'll, we'll suss it all out whether it's going to work for us or not later. So let's get that one taken care of. Maybe we could put a little bit more right there. And we got a little bit more work to do down here, so let's just uh, sketch these in. And don't worry too much about being precise. We're going to blur this, and we're going to make it less opaque. So precision is not super important, and it also, as I said, doesn't really matter if it's uh, going to be out here. Like, I could just draw some stuff out here. It doesn't matter, because we're going to delete all of that. We're going to delete everything that doesn't matter to us. We may care about it over here though, because it's going to combine with the shadow below. So we're going to need to think about how all of that works. And I guess I'll put just a little bit more right in here. And I gotta tell you guys, I have no idea how much longer this tutorial is gonna take. It might be finished up this time in, say, 45 minutes, or it might take uh, it might take some more time. Well, we're just gonna have to see. I have I have no real way of knowing, unfortunately. Okay, so now we've got that. And didn't I have a what we'd really like here is some sort of some way to differentiate this because now we can't see we can't see the rising edge of this. The shadow is the only way we're seeing any detail here. So let's go into the layer style. Now this is Photoshop. Um, if you don't have Photoshop, it could be a bit of an issue uh, because some of these features aren't available on other things. Yeah, it can't really help about that, um, but we will take a look at what some of these other tools are capable of. So I want to look at the GIMP and uh, the other one that I'm not remembering right off the top of my head and uh, we'll see what we can do about making some of these techniques happen over there as well. Now here I've just put like a little bit of an inner bevel on the thing um, and we can see what's going on here and now it's sort of giving us a little bit of a surface on there uh, to work with. You just have to play with these settings and see what you like. I actually wanted just a uh, just kind of along the edge there but it's not really cooperating with me very much. If I lower it to zero it kind of does a little bit but one is probably maybe a better setting. So let's do that and then let's go ahead and uh, Go down here to this guy and turn that green off there. Now, we have the same problem with him. We can't really see. Okay, that's the copy of the crenellation shadow. What we don't have is a wall shadow. Oh, that, there it is, all right there, okay. Let me rename this tower wall shadow. I think that's the one we want. Yeah, it is, I believe. What is going on with that? It looks a little odd to me. But no, I guess it's all right. I guess it's all right. We're going to need to get a lot more definition here, actually. Uh, let's see. We could do something along the lines of... Um, could do an adjustment layer to make the top the layers that are higher just a little bit lighter. We might do something like that. We'll, we'll wait uh, and see what happens. 
But here's our tower wall shadow. So that's all exactly as we need it to be. But let's copy this bevel and emboss. Um, we're going to copy the layer style from this upper part, from the crenellations, down to the wall here. There we go. Now we have a little bit of a little bit of a shape on that guy. And yeah, these aren't showing up quite like I wanted them to. I'm going to go ahead and turn these shadows down now so we can just see. I'm going to put them on multiply and like say 60. All right, so they're not so dark. So here's our crenellation shadow uh, right below the crenellation. Let me just go ahead and make it uh, by the way, if I'm using the wrong part names uh, for these things, just somebody let me know because these are tower walls. This guy we don't need. Why do we have that? Is that the selection layer? Maybe that's a selection layer. Let's call it that. So. I say selection layer because I can click, uh, control click the thumbnail and get that selection and unmodified. And that's why we keep those around so that we can get them back if we need to. And then we have this tower wall shadow. So let's go ahead and make this into multiply like 60. This is just so we can see roughly what it looks like. Um, you will not want to do anything with these with the uh, opacity turned down. If you try to merge these layers, notice how we've got like an overlap thing going on here where you can see like two layers of shadow coming together. You don't want that because it's just going to merge just like that and it's going to look funky. Right now it looks a little psychedelic. We, we, have to, we have to bring them back up to full opacity, merge them, and then do something with them. So just keep that in mind. Now why do we have this? We have this for showing on the... Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Takes me a second to uh, figure stuff out sometimes. All right. So this first uh, crenellation shadow, right, is the shadow only as it appears on the top of the thing immediately below it. So what we're going to do with this guy is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it back up to full. I'm going to turn it on normal. I'm going to put it to 100% opacity. I'm going to I'm going to blur it um, and I'm going to use a filter blur Gaussian and two pixels probably not two pixels more like one pixel or just even under one pixel. We don't want it to get too blurry, especially when you're talking about two things that are very close together, like these little raised bits of concrete and the th the concrete immediately below it. So I did it like 0.6 or 0.7 there. And now that we're done with that, we can go ahead and uh, with that layer selected, we can Control click the thumbnail for the tower wall selection layer, right? Control shift I to select inverse. Now we still have the shadow layer selected and just delete. Now what I've done is deleted everything except for the bit of that shadow that was sitting on this wall ring here. Or this wall square in this case, right? So now with the, uh, and do we need this crenellation selection layer? We might need it again. Uh, don't know. I'm going to leave it for now. It doesn't hurt anything. So now we have our tower walls, and they have a little bit of a shadow on them, and they're generating a shadow, okay? And then we also have a crenellation shadow right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this tower wall shadow. I'm going to go ahead and put it back to full opacity, normal blend mode. Right, I'm going to merge the tower wall shadow and the crenellation shadow copy layers. I'm going to merge those together. Do I want to take a copy of the tower wall shadow? I'm going to go ahead and copy that just in case we need it. 
and I'm going to take those two layers there and I'm going to merge the layers and we're going to call it uh, tower wall shadow it can still be called that and then we're going to do the same blur on it and I don't think we need to do anything special if you want exactly the same uh, filter you can do control F and that'll that'll repeat the last filter I like to do it manually though because you know you never know okay now that we've got that we can select the because now we want this part to be sitting on top of the towers and the walls so we're going to take the actually we're just going to have it just the we're going to keep only the part that sits on the tower or on the yeah on the towers themselves so we're going to take the uh, we're going to have the tower wall shadow selected and I'm going to select the tower base layer by control clicking its thumbnail control shift I to select inverse and delete did that work did that work We still have a shadow somewhere. I've done something wrong. Let me uh, let me reverse that out. Load selection, select inverse, deselect. Oh, I selected inverse and then did not delete it apparently. Okay, well let's leave it like that then. Select inverse and delete. There, okay, I just hit the wrong key apparently. Right, um, so now we've got the shadow on the tower itself, right? Now what we're going to have to do is take care of the walls themselves. So let's drop down to the walls, which are right here. Here's our brick texture for the walls. And what we need to do is create, I think, probably some battlements, crenellations, whatever, along this side of the wall. So let's do that. Um, we can do that pretty easily by, I think, just, um, I can just drag control or I'll drag this layer up and copy it. And let's call this uh, wall crenellations. And I'm going to rename that just to wall. I can never get the click speed on that, right? There we go. Okay, so here's this guy. Now, uh, what we need to do if we want to make just the outer bit here is I'm going to use the lasso, polygonal lasso tool, and I'm just going to try to draw, maybe not that big, uh, try to draw a little area just right along the edge of the thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm clicking on the layer mask thumbnail and that we have black as our background color and I'm going to delete that. Didn't that work? Yeah, that did. Okay, we can see better this way. Alright, so now we'll take the selection tool again this is not precise by any means. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So now we have got deselect. Now we've got just this bit here selected. You can't see it, right? But it's there. Um what we need to do is, what happens if we control select that? Yeah, okay, that's fine. I'm gonna create a layer now, and uh, that is just this uh, mask selected, and I'm going to fill it with black. There we go, that worked. And do I need to delete it? Maybe. I'm just gonna use the marquee tool to select like these big flange bits that didn't really get cut off because we don't really need those in there 
I'm not sure where they go to, what extent they go to, so I'm just kind of clipping around in here just to make sure I get them all. I should probably get it. Okay, there we go. So this is going to form the basis of our shadow on the wall itself. All right, and we couldn't just copy this layer because really it's just its shape is defined entirely by a layer mask. So let me take this layer 9, which is going to be our crenellation shadow on wall. And I'm going to use the V tool, uh, selection tool, to just move it over uh, about how far I think it would be from the... Um, from the wall itself and that's probably not that far frankly now uh, we want to put some put some crenellations on top of here right so we're going to one more time I've re I've, re I've named these wrongly this should really be the wall <laughs> um, what do we call that it's the wall wall yeah we'll, we'll go with wall wall and this is the wall, wall, shadow, arm wall. <laughs> you could probably get a little more uh, accurate with your naming if you want to. All right, now this one is actually, we're going to copy it again, and this is actually going to be the crenellations. Okay, there we go. Now, what we need to do is, if you remember last time we used shapes to remove these bits out of here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do this time. I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to create a new layer on top here. I'm going to use my marquee tool to just draw a shape that's about the size of the thing that I want. And I'm going to fill that with black. Now this is just on a new layer, right? And this wall isn't 100% straight, so I'm just going to turn it just like a, a a hair. Maybe that's too much even. It is too much. What if we do this angle like one degree? I mean it's it's super super minor, right? You don't even have to do this, but so now I'm just going to uh, control or alt drag that shape and we're not making new layers here, we're just dragging this shape around within the layer and creating new ones. So I'm alt dragging to do this. And I'm not going to try to be super precise here. I could, but I'm not going to. Um, these things aren't made very precisely for one thing. So there's that. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm going to copy or just select them all and then just drag them up. Oh. Um, yeah, there we go. Just press V again. I'm just going to bring them up a little bit so that they're nicely in the center. And then I'm going to deselect. I'm going to use the marquee tool to select just one of these guys. And I'm going to alt drag it up here. Now this one we are going to want to change the angle on pretty good. I just want to get it kind of so that it's perpendicular to this wall here. So that's close enough for my needs. I'm going to kind of slide it in here roughly in the same spot as that guy and then I'm just going to drag it. Alt, drag it. Sorry. There we go. And uh, do we do one more maybe? Maybe. I'm not sure it'll have an impact. So now we have this little thing here which is not going to really be part of our image. What that is going to be is a selection so I've hidden it and then control clicked its thumbnail and now it's a selection. So we're going to use that over here in the crenellations layer, in the layer mask to, uh, to delete out the bits of wall that we don't want. So again I've got black selected as my background color. That's because we're working on a layer mask, right? So if I alt click this we can see the white stuff is what we're seeing, right? So when I hit delete here all the bits we have selected are going to go black and therefore aren't going to show up when we go back to the main image. Um, you alt, yeah, alt click the uh, layer mask to see the layer mask. 
and you left click the thumbnail to go back to the main image. So now we have our crenellations and um, you can't see them, but that's all right. Uh, what we need to do is click this. I just control click this layer. You know what, sorry. Let me let me deselect this. We're going to delete that selection layer that I just made because we don't need it anymore. Now I'm going to control control click the mask layer, and I'm going to make yet another new layer. Uh, so in this layer, we're going to fill it with black. So just selecting the uh, fill tool over here, and why can't oh because I made a not a layer. I made a I made a folder. Let's delete that folder. I just want a layer. There we go. So control clicking it, getting the fill tool, and filling it with black. Now if I move this out, you can see what it looks like. So I'm going to use, uh, with V selected, the, the grabber tool selected, I'm just going to move it a little bit. And that almost feels worthless <laughs> like that. Gee, shouldn't we have... Uh, Shouldn't we have done something else with it? Um, yeah, it doesn't seem like it did all that much, but it put a little bit onto the walls there. And then I'm going to alt drag it down here to the wall shadow on a wall, and I'm going to move it to the left and down a little bit more, so that we get our uh, our shadows on the ground too. So there we go. Now we have a little bit of a shadow on the ground. Hmm, not sure exactly how much to put, but that'll work. So this is our crenellation shadow on wall. Yeah, we might only get through the shadows this time. Sorry, guys. On wall. Yeah, something like that. This is really on the wall wall, I guess. All right, uh, so now we need to do some touch up again. And as I'm going through this, I'm feeling like, oh gosh, uh, this is taking forever. I feel kind of bad about that, yada, yada. Um, and the fact is, is that it there's just no way to do this quickly. There's not. And if you want to learn how to do it, uh, you definitely won't be able to do it quickly for quite some time. I can't do it quickly. And I've been doing this a lot, so, you know, what are you going to do? It just takes time to do this sort of thing. All right, so all we're caring about here is, and let me go ahead and put a stroke. What? No. Layer effects, please. Stroke. Size 1, and let's make it green. So now we can see. So the green is the wall itself, the wall on the wall and the red is the little crenellations. So what we want to do is in this crenellation shadow on wall wall layer, geez, these layer names, okay, our, uh, we're going to want to do some touch up just like I did before. So notice how these kind of start out a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of scribble in just a little bit of shadow, just enough that it'll get picked up by the blur filter and pushed around a little bit so these things don't just start out in the middle of nowhere and again I'm not being terribly precise I'm just sort of scribbling them out okay I'm coming to the rapid realization this is going to be a three-parter as I realize that we're hitting 30 minutes so far okay there we go with that now, we're going to do exactly the same thing we did before. Filter, Blur, Gaussian, and I'm doing 0 0.7 here. It didn't do much apparent to us, but that's okay. And now I'm going to control click the mask for the wall on the wall. I'm going to do control shift I to select the inverse. I'm still, I've got my shadow layer there selected, and I'm going to delete. Now you see that we've deleted only the bit of that shadow that isn't on the wall here. So, 
Now we can make this layer effect go away. Uh, although we need to do our bevel and emboss, same as before. And actually, why don't we just copy it? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, going to paste layer style, and notice we get a little bit of a bevel on there. It's all going to add up to being being something that we can see. <coughs> Excuse me, I think I need to pause for a bit to clear my throat. All right, sorry about that. Uh, let's see. So back to this. So we've got our crenellation shadow on the wall. Now what we need to do, or on the wall wall, <laughs> what we need to do now is turn this stuff on and sort this out. So what we're going to do, if we're happy with the position of this, does it need any futzing? Well, it could use some futzing, actually. So get our brush tool. And what I'll do is just make this not entirely straight. Because we're coming at an angle, right? With our, with our light. So let's just angle it a bit. I think that'll look a little bit better. Yeah, good. All right, now we're going to merge these two layers. And we're going to uh, filter, blur, Gaussian, point zero point seven there, right. And now, now I think we've got it. Okay, now for the wall itself, we're going to do the same layer style. So copy layer style, paste that on there, and we get that little bit of bevel going on now. And let's zoom out and take a look at it. Yeah, I think it's starting to show. I mean, there's some areas here where the shadows line up with the light that we lose detail. And we'll have to work on that a little bit. Uh, there's a couple ways we can do it. But uh, let's let's go ahead and, and press on and try to get the shadows done here before we, before we get to that. All right. So probably the next biggest, most important thing to do is let's put this thing on the ground. Right now it's just sort of floating here. It doesn't even look like it's attached to this really bad textured ground that I've got going on. What we need to do is uh, create a... Um, we need to create a shadow on the ground. We're going to assume that the ground is perfectly flat. It's just a textured carpet at this point. So. I can actually use this wall base that we've already got here. Bring that up, and I think it's already black. What do we have here? Pattern overlay. I don't want that. Let me just clear the layer style. Uh, get my selection tool. Yeah, we can just slide this guy out. And let's slide it out a fair bit, because obviously the wall is tall. And we could shift it vertically, but then we'd have to draw some at the margins. I don't really want to do that. And then we're going to also bring down the tower base as a copy. It was supposed to be a copy. Did I make a copy? Tower base. Yes, I made a copy of it. Okay, we're going to turn that on. And I'm going to do the same thing with it. I'm going to bring it out over here. And I am going to shift that down a little bit because we don't want that perfectly lined up. Okay, so there's our wall and tower showing on the ground over here a little bit. And we got some mismatching going on here, so we need to do a little bit of editing on it. And let me just zoom in. You know, I really wish there was a 400 up here on this thing. It seems like I'm always zooming in to 400. All right, so on the tower base copy, which is really going to be like Tower Shadow or something like that. We're, I'm just going to sketch in a little bit of a connection here to the main wall. And honestly, my pen is probably too soft for that. We could probably do something different. And we don't really have to do anything else with the rest of it. Okay, so here's our shadow on the ground from our wall and our towers. And um, we could do a little bit more, actually. 
now that I look at it, we could slide that out just a little bit more to imply that the towers are quite a bit higher than the walls. I don't think I want to do that. Um, we could, though. I'm going to leave it. Um, if you wanted to give the impression that the towers were a good bit higher than the walls, you could bring this out even more. I think that would be good. And the way you can tell, right, is if we look at the silhouette here of the uh, the wall itself. Let me get a... Uh, you guys cannot see my pointer, so let me just get let me just get a color that we can see and draw on here. Let me use our layer up here for this. I can't see my pointer. I know you guys can't. Um, this edge, right? If you look at it, it's not all that different than this edge. If we wanted to imply that these things were not the same height, that this was that this was in fact taller than this, then we would want, let me get just a different color here, we would probably want the thing to be more like this, right? That's a really bad drawing, but uh, that we would want it to be further out. But I'm not going to really bother with that. So, yeah, I am. I am. Because I just can't not do it. We have to make it taller. It has to be. It won't look right. I mean, that's the thing, right? It's just not going to look right. So now I have to go in here and redo this, and that's fine. I'm going to try to line it up, though. And what I'm going to do instead of doing a pencil down there is I'm just going to use the uh, I'm just going to use the polygonal lasso tool to grab that and uh, grab a brush, grab a big brush. Not in magenta, please, uh, in black. I'm just going to scribble that out. It's not going to matter that much, uh, although, mm, no, I will touch that up. That'll show up. So, I left kind of a notch there. We don't want that. All right, back to 200% magnification. Okay, so we got that. Now what we don't have though is the crenellations from the tower uh, down on the ground. So um, we need to try to get that. So let's grab this sea shadow layer up here. Bring it down to just above the tower base copy tower shadow on ground thing. And uh, let's slide it out and see what we can do with it. What does this look like? It's already been modified. I don't think we want that, actually. Let me delete that. And instead, let's just create a new layer. And I'm going to select our crenellation layer with it, with that new layer selected. And I'm going to use the fill tool to fill. And then I'm going to use the V tool, the move tool, to move this over. Now, this isn't working quite like we'd like it to, unfortunately. Uh, they look a little funny. We will definitely have to do some editing on these things, but I think it's necessary that they be there. So, so let's just uh, do some scribbling here. What we're doing is we're trying to take a, a, a top view of the thing and make it into almost a side view of the thing um, or like a three quarters view of the thing. And that's just not really working real well. So we have to kind of imagine what these things would look like if projected onto the ground. And unfortunately, I don't think this is going to do a great job of it. Um, you will want to do a little more work on your own version of the thing. All right, yeah, we got some real funny business going on right here. So I'm just scribbling to kind of hopefully make it look a little bit better. Uh, what would these look like from the side? Well, I don't really know. It's probably just that they would look a little rough as the angle of our sun is not giving us a lot. So 
we can just get away with putting a little bit of a roughness here, although maybe not that rough. So just deleting, erasing that a bit. You know what? I think that's going to be okay. So I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to take all three of these layers and I'm going to merge them. Okay, so now they're merged. I'm going to do a filter blur Gaussian. Now, the 0.7 that we were using before doesn't seem quite as good when we're this far away, right? We're, we're going further away. We kind of want more blur going on, I think, right? So maybe that. I did like 2.3 or something like that. And um, I think that's probably a little bit better. Now we've got one more thing we have to do. And uh, it, it eluded me for a moment. But we need to um, put the tower shadow on the wall as well. Let me get rid of this stuff here. Oh, nope, don't do it there. Um, do it on this layer. I did it on the wrong layer. Okay, I'm just deleting out some of this. I kind of messed up my my uh, light line there, but that's fine. Okay, so we're going to copy this tower base copy, which is kind of like our selection layer. And it's black already, and it's where we want it to be. In other words, underneath this textured copy of the thing. And we can move that down too. Now it's only affecting this one because this one would be shining in shadow down below where we can't see. But it's putting it right here. So we're going to need to kind of uh, fix this line right here along the bottom of the tower. So I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to not do too much to it, but just take away that curve that's showing up there. And I'm going to turn that light back off. I'm going to uh, filter Gaussian blur this guy, not 2.2, but maybe 1. Point, maybe 1.0. There we go. Now we need to not have. If I turn this off, we can see this is shining on the ground, right? Which is going to give us problems later on. So let's just make it be only on the wall. So I'm going to select the wall. I'm going to Control Shift I. I've still got the shadow selected and I'm going to delete. Now we only have what would be showing on top of the wall here. So now if we turn this back on, this is our shadow and ground. Uh, this is our shadow on wall. Now you see what I was talking about, about layer management being an issue. You really want to name your layers something that you can figure out what they are later on. But here's our, here's our wall. Now we don't have a little like inside wall. And we could do that if we wanted to. Uh, didn't really want to for some reason, but you could. You certainly could. What we need to do now is let's go in here and uh, adjust the opacities of these layers. So I'm going to put them on multiply and uh, I'm going to turn the opacity down to, I don't know, 60% maybe. Maybe 70 for the smaller layers that are closer to the thing they're laying on. So turn that one on multiply, like maybe I'll go to 65 with that one. And then for the shadow on the wall itself, the shadow of the tower on the wall, well, those actually turned down quite a bit. Is that too much turned down or do we want them darker? Hmm. Maybe I want them a little darker than that. Put it up to 80 for that top one. The next one up to 75. Yeah, okay. Those are a little bit better. And the shadow on the wall will make it multiply and uh, 70. Okay, can live with that, I guess. Now, this one, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to put that on multiply. 
I think we had 80 on the top one. I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. And then on this guy, which is that one right there, I'm gonna put that on multiply, oops, multiply. And you can mess around with these shadow modes and decide whether you want them to be something different. 75, yeah, I guess so. And then shadow on ground, multiply, and let's say 65. Yeah, I guess that's okay. Uh, one thing you can do is you can progressively blur this. You can make it blurrier the further it gets away from the thing casting the shadow. That can improve the realism a little bit. You can use the blur tool by hand to do this a little bit. You can also make it a little darker near the object if you want to do that. And you can do that sometimes if you just want to like overlap a little bit and mess around with uh, with opacities and stuff. I didn't do that here. That gets a little more complicated, but um, but it does work. So be sure to think about it at least. Now we're going to do one more thing and we're going to call this one done for now. We'll have to come back for the smaller one later, I guess, and uh, try it out. But the, um, the next thing you want to do, possibly, is that thing I was talking about, about maybe making these different heights, a different kind of, uh, uh, have an adjustment on top of it. So we could do that with an adjustment layer, we could do it with another layer. I'm going to do it with an adjustment layer, and I think what I'm going to do is select this crenellations layer mask, because that's got our shapes in it. Do an adjustment layer, and I guess, I guess brightness contrast. And why don't we turn that up maybe to like 30? We can play with this later and see how it works for us. But So there's, there's one at 30. Then the walls themselves, let's select those guys. And, and so if you pre-select something, when you hit the layer adjust, it'll automatically have a mask built in, if you didn't know that. So we did 30, why don't we do 25, 20, maybe 20, I don't know. Here's where we really need the contrast, so maybe 15. Not 215, just 15. There we go, okay, that's better. Um, and then now we've got the towers themselves. We could do those just a little bit. I, I will boost it just a tiny, tiny bit. Like maybe five. Although we could actually lower it. Okay. The next layer down is these crenellations. We're going to leave those where they are. And then down here on the wall part, I'm going to actually, okay, now, now this is going to be a problem because it's going to uh, highlight parts we don't want highlighted because it actually extends beyond everything else. We need to be careful of that. You know what? I think we can leave that alone, actually. Oh no, no, it'll be below everything. It's fine, it's fine. Let's try it anyway. So this one, we're gonna lower by five. We're gonna make it negative five. And then on the, let's see, the wall itself. I'm gonna select that. We're gonna do another brightness contrast on it. And let's make it negative 15 and see how all of this looks now. I think you can see that it stands out a little bit better. Now the final, 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 final thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my uh, maps directory here. We're going to go into this grunge and we're gonna pick a grunge layer to throw on top of here. Then I'll show you what I mean about really liking what grunge does to stuff. So if I, I'm just gonna Select all, copy that, bring it into my uh, my layer here. I'm gonna paste it over the top of this guy like that, and I'm gonna resize it. I'm gonna use Shift Alt to make it smaller in all directions, and you might have to do that a couple of times. I know there are more clever ways to do it, but I'm not very clever, so we're gonna leave it like this. 
Now, what I'm going to do is uh, make a layer mask on this wall here, or on this uh, texture here, but I'm going to do it by selecting, let's see, the tower base, and then holding shift, the wall base, and now we've got basically the shape of the whole thing here. I'm going to go back to this layer, or grunge layer, and let's call it grunge. And I'm going to add a layer mask. There we go. Now we got a layer mask, and that looks great. It took away all of the hard work that we had done, but uh, we can go and put it on, say, multiply and turn it down however much we want. So we can, here's what happens when we have it at full, here's what happens when we have it not at all. I'm just going to put it on just a little bit. It gives it some color variation. It gets rid of the super repeating texture feel that we had going on there. And it actually makes our highlighting stand out a little bit more. Maybe even too much. Uh, we might want to back off of that highlighting now. The grunge really makes it show up, doesn't it? So anyway, that is, um, that's it for this. I don't think we're going to be able to do much more with this wall, as simple as it is, right? Without any, any real design uh, criteria. Uh, we're going to leave it as is. So uh, we'll come back again for the little wall, and maybe we'll try to do something different. For one thing, we will uh, maybe attempt to make this interact with the road beneath it, have a gatehouse or something like that, and maybe a stream or something, and some variations in terrain so we can play with what shadows might do on that. Right here, we've got this sitting on a tabletop, um, you know, battle map or something, and it's just, uh, it's just shining, you know, its shadow is it's just nice and flat, but we can try to do something more interesting over here. So anyway, guys, thanks very much for joining me, and I uh, hope you enjoy the new channel. I'm going to try to do one of these map videos at least one a week. I will try to do two, but I don't guarantee anything. I'm, I'm unfortunately kind of real busy with a real job and uh, do this just for fun. So uh, thanks very much for all of your support in the past, and I look forward to making more maps with you guys. Take it easy.